OMG! Welcome back, everybody. This is your host, The Doctor. This is Star Trek Online, and oh yes, this is my character, Omega. Now, it has been two months, yes, two whole months, since the last video in this series. So the last video was number 54. This video is going to be 55 in my Let's Play of the Re almost said Reman faction, I wish there was, no, Romulan faction, but playing a Reman character who is a tactical character and my character named Omega. I'm playing him as kind of an, quote, evil character trying to get back to his universe, um, as evil as I can in Star Trek Online anyway. And I realize it's been two months since the last video on this character. Now my goal with this playthrough on this character is to play every single mission and record it. And of course show you my progress and updates and whatever I do with this character. And we're already 50, uh, as of this video, 55 videos in on this playthrough. So go back and check out video number 54 if you want to see where I left off two months ago on this character. But I'll give you just a brief summary. When I left off in that video, we had just finished the Cardassian struggle. And we finished it by playing the Task Force Operations Cardassian struggle, which is basically means to play a Cardassian... TFO. And the TFO that I chose to play was the one where you have to protect uh, DS9 from Terra, well, from the evil DS9. Uh, what's the name of it? Counterpoint, I believe it's called. Yes, Counterpoint. So that's what I played in number 54 of the last video, Counterpoint. And what that did is that brought us up to the end of the Cardassian struggle, and now we are at the beginning of the Borg advance. I have not played any more missions since that last video, so we are still right where I left off in terms of missions, so we can hail and start the Borg advance. But I'm not going to do that in this video. That's going to be in the next one, number 56. And the reason why is because in this one, I want to get a new ship. I'm tired of this ship I've been flying. Um, but first, before we get into that, I have made updates to the character in those two months. I have continued to play on this character. I just haven't done any of the missions. What I've done are like TFOs and special events or red alerts that have come up and things like that. So what it means is in the last video I was level 63. I had not hit in game yet. But two months later I am now 65. So I am at in-game level right now. I am at max level 65. And in fact, I've been at level 65 several times, which means I have leveled up my uh, specialization skill a little bit more than the last video. Under pilot is what I'm working on for my active primary specialization. And you can see I've got tier one and tier two done of pilot and I'm working on tier three. So I've hit 65 and then, you know, gone over and hit it again and again and again a few times to get my specialization higher than it was in the last video you saw. So also because of that, I've also been working on my reputation. That's another big change from the last video. I have a lot more of my reputation done since the last video. So at this point, uh, well, you can see I am halfway to tier six uh, of the Gamma Task Force reputation, Omega Task Force, uh, not Gamma, Omega. So that's the um, Borg one. So I'm almost at, well, not almost, but halfway to tier six on that. So that is a work in progress. That's something I don't, I don't even know if I had hit tier five on it back then, but I've definitely hit tier five now and on to tier six. I have also hit tier five in the Nukara Strike Force reputation. That means I can now use the traits that I was looking to use, which was an offensive and defensive trait, and I'll show you that, that I now have access to. Another thing is I've also hit tier five in the Romulan reputation. And in fact, I am now working on the tier six of the Romulan reputation. So, um, 
I've made a lot of progress there in terms of those reputations. That basically just means I have more traits open to me now that I didn't have before. I have reputation items I can now get if I want to and need to. Um, I've got a lot of marks in some of these, like 2433 Romulan marks, uh, 966 Nukara marks. I've got, I don't have a lot of Omega marks. I need to work on some Omega marks. So I've made progress in all that. I don't have any other reputations started though, just those. And the Nukara one was important for me because of two traits that I wanted that I now have enabled. And it was the, these two traits here, Auxiliary Power Configuration Defense, which gives you a defensive power based on your auxiliary power, and then offense power based on your auxiliary power. You get a bonus all damage, and, uh, and on the defense you get uh, maximum hit points and shield capacity also based on your auxiliary power. And I wanted those two traits specifically from the Nukara reputation. So I got it to level five, and now I've got those traits. And in fact, I've got all my space and ground traits maxed out at the moment. Now, all of my space and reputation and ground reputation traits are geared toward buffing up my ship. Because, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in previous videos, I had a lot of problems with the ship that I was using. I even have my starship traits maxed out using traits, again, that buff the ship. Now, the ship I have been flying is this one right here. This is the Dinos Warbird Destroyer Tier 5 U. So it's not Tier 6, but it is Tier 5 U. And honestly, that should be good enough for in-game. But I've had problems with this ship in that I die really easily. My shield strength goes to nothing like instantly, and my hull strength goes to nothing like instantly. It's been a real big problem, and honestly, I am sick and tired of it. Sick and tired. I am ready to get rid of the ship now and get a new ship. And I'm going to go with the Tier 6 version of this ship. Again, this is the veteran ship. And the reason why I've been playing with this ship is because I've never played with it before. I've never used it before. And so that's what the whole point of me using this ship here was, is I wanted to try it out. I wanted to play it. I wanted to give it the best go that I could. But I'm done with it. I'm sick of it. I'm ready to move on. And the one I want to move on with is the Tier 6 version of it. But before I get to that and upgrade to that ship, I want to give this one one last hurrah. So this video today is going to be kind of a review video for the Dino Swarbird Destroyer and give it a proper send-off. That's what this video is about today. I'm going to give this ship a proper send-off and then I'm going to equip the new ship that I'm going to go with. So before we get to the Borg missions and play the first Borg mission, let's do a review of this ship and give it a proper send-off. Now the weapons I'm using, this may be another thing that has been upgraded since the last video, I can't recall, but I used an upgrade weekend to upgrade all of my gear on this ship. So everything is now Epic Mark 15. It's as high level as it can go, and it's as high quality as it can go. So I really am giving this ship the best benefit of the doubt. I'm giving it Mark 15 Epic Gear. So, you know, if it has trouble with that and all the traits I've got, I've got going on to buff it up and all that, then it definitely needs to go. I've also, got, of course, got the masteries, uh, Ma Starship Mastery unlocks on it, all unlocked. And just as a reminder, it's got plus 5% accuracy. Um, it's got enhanced singularity circuitry, which increases my singularity charge rate by 30% and reduces the cooldown time on singularity powers by 15%. Then I have enhanced weapon systems, which is plus 10% kinetic and energy weapon damage, so that's nice. And then I've got plus 2.5% critical chance. So that is the mastery unlocks, and they are all unlocked. In terms of weaponry, I've got sensor-linked disruptor dual heavy cannons. So this is plain old, good old disruptor energy type, and it is sensor-linked which means that it improves defense and it improves critical hit severity with weapons. And you will notice that I've got a crit D and damage times three. Uh, I need to change some of the modifiers on these, but 
This one has crit D and damage times three and then accuracy damage. And then this has crit H and damage times two. I need to change that crit H out on them. In the uh, turrets, I have also sensor linked disruptor turrets. So my critical severity should be very high with this ship. And again, damage times three or supposed to be damage times three. This has crit D times two and damage times two. And this one's a bit of a mixed bag too. So some of these I need to work on the modifiers, but pretty much they're very powerful. I shouldn't have a problem with weapon damage. I should be doing a lot of weapon damage with this ship. And then I just have a quantum torpedo up here for my torpedo. And of course I got the hyper experimental ion stream projector because this is an escort type ship. So it has that weapon. Now, the weak spot in this honestly is my deflector impulse and shield. I have the Aegis set on here. So no, it's not the best set, but it was one of the cheapest because I only, I only had to spend energy credits. I didn't have to wait for the reputations to open up. So I have the full set though, and I have it all maxed out at Mark 15 epic levels. So I'm getting the best Aegis set abilities and performance I can, which is still a pretty good shield capacity, 8940 on it. Um, so that's still not a bad shield capacity. It's a pretty high shield capacity. So I should not be having the troubles that I'm having with this ship, yet I still am. It also has a kinetic and energy damage resistance, and it's the whole set. So I've got the set 2 energy negation bonus and the set 3 energy feedback conductor bonus out of this set. So that negates, so I've got energy negation. That negates all damage for 0.25 seconds once every 30 seconds. And then I have energy feedback conductor, um, which is a plus 100 energy damage resistance rating, a 30% shield resistance for one and a half seconds, and a 2% bonus energy damage for 10 seconds. So I got, you know, this is really not a terrible, it's not the worst set in the world. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. So it actually has pretty good abilities, honestly. I shouldn't be having the troubles I'm having with this ship, but I am. Now in terms of consoles, I've got a Neutronium for all damage resistance. I've got Conductive RCS with energy power. Because remember with this ship, I, I wanted it to turn a little faster and move a little faster. And so that's why I got that. I got the assimilated module. I've got the um, dynamic tactical system, which comes with this ship. That allows it to do its special abilities for this ship. I have a protomatter field projector. Somebody recommended that I get this and put this on here. Uh, because I was having so much trouble staying alive, this is something that I can actually activate and will give me a great heal and uh, shield and hull regeneration, as you can see. So this is a console that I now have on here to give me better abilities. And then the tactical console is all disruptor damage with uh, critical chance maxed out. So it's not a bad build, it's just still not as, for some reason on this ship, it just still doesn't work that well, but whatever. Uh, I only have the, I only have one specialization right now, as I said, working on the pilot and about halfway through on pilot. Um, you saw the traits, that's what I got going. I've got some starship traits going, like battle ready, and uh, ablative field projector and shield overload and improved critical systems. So even, even with all that, it's still a squishy ship. I have my powers, of course, cannons, cannon powers, unite, that sort of thing. So that's the basic ship setup that I have right now. Compared to the last video, it's probably been very upgraded in terms of like mark level and all that. Now, one other thing before we go to space and take a look at it in space and, you know, taken into battle. Uh, I had mentioned in the last video that I was looking for the 2800 series, which was part of the Cardassian Struggle, or used to be part of the Cardassian Struggle, but they moved it out of the Cardassian Struggle, and that featured series is no longer here. And I was looking through the available tab, and in the last video, I could not find where it was. I could not find how to start it. But you all let me know in the comments, and thank you for your feedback and answers, that it doesn't open up until you're level 65. And I was level 63 in that video. 
So now that I'm level 65, let's go into the available tab and see if it's here. Well, where are you? Hmm, okay, so this is Spectres, everything old is new, Night of the Comet, Skirmer, Spin the Wheel, What Lies Beneath. Here's Wasteland, I can do Wasteland now, A Fistful of Gorn, Blind Man, Tell All Tales, Installation 18, The Lost City of the Undying. Maybe it's this one, Lost Dominion? The Federation is hosting a conference at Deep Space Nine. They plan to discuss what to do about the Borg. I'd greatly like to know what their plans are concerning this menace. As Maybe this is it. Maybe it is Lost Dominion is the first one. And if I do that, would that open it up? Because otherwise, I don't see it here. There's Hot Lead, Cold War, Illusion of Communication, Report on Borg Activities. I've got the Atli. I've got uh, new Romulus stuff to do. Kobali Crisis. Unlocking the box, Asteroid, Triolus, Picanus, Tutorials, Wild Ruins, Breaking the Planet, Peos Trader, this is all new Romulus stuff, and then Tour of the Galaxy. I don't see, you see how Spectres and Wasteland are in quotes, and you can do like, you know, Mission Replay Spectres, Mission Replay Wasteland. Shouldn't there be one here that says the 2800 Mission Replay? Unless I have to do Lost Dominion first. The Federation is hosting a I don't conference know. at Deep Space Nine. I don't know because it's not there now. So maybe I do have to do that one first. Let me know. What am I doing wrong? I'm level 65 now. I've looked under available and I still don't see the 2800 unless it is that one that I have to do, Lost Dominion. If I do that, then will it open up? It's not that I necessarily want to play it. It's just that, you know, they've removed all these things from the main mission storyline and now it's like impossible to find them it's like if you were a new player to the game how would you know that 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 series the 2800 even exists you know how would you know you wouldn't know because you've never played the game before so I don't like the fact that they took it out of the storyline because <laughs> now it's like okay I, I guess I just don't get to I don't play it anymore I don't know where it's at and even when I do know what it is and where to go look for it I still can't find it <laughs> so what the heck? What is up with that? I think it's a little odd. I wish they wouldn't do stuff like that. It just makes it, it seems like they've had so much good content, but then they just remove so much stuff too. Like, stop removing stuff, man. Make a new column called side missions or side quests and put it under there. That's all, I, it's all you have to do. It's simple. Like right here, instead of uh, episodes, put one, put another button right beside episodes called side quests. Dude, that's all you got to do. And then put those series there. Put put uh, Spectres there. Put Wasteland there. Put um, the 2800 there. Put it all under there, under side quests. People would see it and they would know it's there and it would be organized. Man, I got all the answers, man. Cryptic, come to me. I've got the answers. I've got your answers. Okay, well, here we are in my ship that I cannot wait to get rid of. The Dinos, you've seen it before. I've been playing it for uh, playing on it for a long time now. Um, it's all maxed out. Let's look at the stats on it. My stealth detection rating is 17.50. Power transfer rate is 266%. Defense rating is 97.6. My hull strength is 64,622. That is a little low, but it's an escort. Hull repair rate is 98.4% a minute. My shield strength is not terrible, 12,958. Um, shield regeneration, 352.8 shield every six seconds. Uh, my resists are not bad. I mean, near 40% except for radiation. Uh, my crit severity is very good, 75%. And my crit chance is almost 20% to hit that crit severity, so that's nice. My turn rate is a 38.2 degrees a second, and I love that turn rate. Flight speed is 42. 
So on the turn right now, see I can turn really fast on this ship, and that's what I like. I like ships that can move fast and turn fast. So that's the turn right here. I like that a lot. Good turn rate. Let's uh, zoom in on the ship as far as possible and take a look at it. I think it's got a great look to it. Um, it really does look nice. That's a nice looking ship. It's a nice design. Very aesthetically pleasing. Really don't have much else to say about that. It's just a really good looking ship. If I zoom all the way out, that's what it looks like zoomed all the way out. It's a little small. Let's take it up to another ship and see what it looks like comparison in size. Again, I'm just kind of doing a mini review here of this ship. Let me uh, move these buttons over first. Hold on. You go down there. So here it is next to a scimitar. It's about the size of one of the wings on the scimitar. So it's not a big ship. But it's also not tiny either. It's about a mid-sized ship, I would say. It's a good size. It's a good sized ship. It's a you know a good size to fly at. And it is maneuverable. Let's put it up to this Klingon ship. It's about similarly sized to a Klingon ship. It's a little bit bigger. Maybe. Eh, maybe not. It's about similarly sized to that ship. Whatever that one is. I don't know my Klingon ships as well as my Federation ships. This is the Kib QIB Intel Battlecruiser. So it's about similar size to that. Gives you an idea. This is a good size to fly. So those are my specs. That's the ship. Um, you've already seen me take it into combat, but now that I've got all my gear maxed out, let's do some combat in it. I'm not really sure what to do though. I didn't plan this video through very well. Let's play a TFO or something like that. What's playing right now? We got Pavho Dissension, but that's ground. Uh, let's do for defense of Starbase One. That's kind of kind of popular. And we'll go to um, the advanced version of that. So defense of Starbase One advanced. We'll play some other stuff too, but let's start with that. And so the rest of this video, just sit back and relax. I'm just going to play a couple of TFOs here and uh, show you how the uh, ship performs maxed out like it is. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I will show you the next ship I'm going to upgrade to. At the end of this video, I will show you the next ship. So stay tuned at least to the end of the video. And I will show you what ship I'm going to switch this out with. I've got Vulnerability Assessment Sweep, affects friendly players and self, plus 20 to 40 weapon armor penetration for 15 seconds when I enable that. I believe that's part of my tactical ability for hitting level 65. My space tactical ability. Now I'm in the uh, regenerative mode of this ship right now. It's got two modes. Listen up. It's got an offensive mode and a regener regenerative mode. If I put it in the offensive mode, tactical mode, I don't have as good defenses on it. And I'm already blowing up really easily, so I'm going to keep it in the regener regenerative mode. I really don't need the, um, the Lotus Plasma thing that it has. I like the Tachyon inversion and the defensive capabilities of it. But it does have two firing Here they modes. Come. Two firing modes. But one thing I do have Ship is, under attack. is very powerful weapons. Target shields have failed. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm able to tear through the enemy really easily. Look at the damage. Look at this. I'm down to 74%. Even with all the buffs I have on damage, my shields and hull went to nothing. Nothing. Target's shields have failed. So I've got really powerful weaponry. That's great. I just can't take any damage. Right shield failing. 
Target's shields have failed. Left shields failing. Even as maneuverable as it is, it's not as maneuverable as like a pilot ship or something could be. But those are smaller. This is about a medium sized ship, so. That's why that RCS accelerator on it really came in handy. Four shields failing. Rear shields failing. Look at that. I got no shields left. I'm down to 29%. Hull integrity below 25%. I am taking I am taking failed. a freaking beating. So this is where what's that ability I have? Is this the proto matter one? Where's my proto matter? Did I hit it? Yeah, that's the proto matter field. That's giving me some healing. That's the only thing keeping me alive. Hull integrity below 50%. Yeah, so this is that console I have. This is the protomatter field. That gives me shield and hole regen. We may have a short amount of time before more arrive. See how I'm glowing green there? It's giving me a hole and shield regen. That helps me stay alive in this ship. But it has reading some heavier ships incoming. It has a two-minute recharge time is the only problem. An evacuation ship is Warning. launching. Ships Give them cover. Attack. Target shields have failed. So I can do damage easily. I just can't take damage. Target shields have failed. Four shields failing. Hull integrity below 75%. So I have a lot of healing abilities and like shield abilities and stuff. Ship is launching. Give them failing. cover. That's the only way I can stay alive is using all that stuff. Target shields have failed. Also have my singularity abilities that can help me stay alive too. I've got this one right here, which does that quantum absorption. Target shields have failed. That's cool. That ship is saved. There will be another one. Somewhere. An evacuation ship is launching. There it is. Give them cover. Right shield failing. Target shield have failed. Somebody's trying to push the ships away at the same time I'm trying to fire on them. I guess it worked. Huh? Okay, that one should be away. Klingons are regrouping again. Heal Get my into shields. position to prepare for the next assault. Okay, that ship's fine. Next one. See where it will be. Oh yeah, I can use this too. I Here can come the Klingon battleships. I can use my Keep tactical fighting. ability there too, which also helps me do a lot of damage. Ship is launching. Give them cover. Rear shield failing. 
Where is the other ship at? Over here, huh? Somebody's using Elachi Crescent weapons. Those look really nice. I need to revisit some Elachi ships. I've never used the tier 6 Elachi ships, and I really want to. Maybe one day. Four shields failing. Here's the Proto Matter again. Quite nice. Yeah, as I get into more, um, more damaging enemies like the Borg that we're about to get into on this character, I really need a more better ship. I still want an escorty type ship. I want to do the damage and I want to turn really well, but I don't want to die so fast. <laughs> ship is under attack. Have a problem with that. Target's shields have failed. See, if I had a ship that could better withstand stuff, that'll hold them off for now. Then I could use I don't know how much traits. Longer we can keep up with this kind of war. Six and a oh, you know what? I needed Omega. Oh, well. See, if I get a ship that can better tank damage, uh, but still do a lot of damage and turn well, then I can use traits in other aspects. I don't have to use all the traits I'm using now to try try to keep the ship alive. I can use traits that add to my damage and like really, really, really crank up the DPS while still staying alive. That's the goal. But right now I have like all my traits trained on trying to keep the ship alive. Like every trait is to increase shield strength or hull strength or defense or stuff like that. So I want to put those to better use to like doing damage. But with this ship I can't. So and even with all that stuff turned on, <laughs> it's still it's still just dies so quickly and I'm I'm really really tired of that. I'm just really sick of it. <laughs> Let's do something else. I need some Omega Marks. Let's just go ahead and do a simple conduit advanced because I do need some Omega Marks. But with that trait on that I have, the, uh, the two here, I've got, what is it, plus 8.8 .8 all damage resistance and plus 2.2 .2 maximum hit points and plus 2.2 .2 maximum shield capacity and that's based on my auxiliary power which is only 43 so it's not very high and then my offensive is plus 2.2 percent bonus all damage and plus 2 percent accuracy based on that 43 auxiliary damage I have if I had a higher auxiliary damage or auxiliary then those numbers would be higher and that's what I like about that new car, those two new Kara traits, is it is based on your auxiliary power. You can increase the, the numbers there if you had more auxiliary power, which is real good on a science ship. Warning, ship is under attack. Target shields have failed.
Target's shields have failed. Four shields failing. See, look, my shields are already but gone. Your culture will adapt to service ours. Nanite spheres are out. They've already destroyed the um, generators over here. Come on, come on. Got it. Okay. Target shields have failed. Target shields have failed. I have a pretty good team here, so I'm not really dying easily, and that's because my team is very powerful. That's nice. It's always good when you have a powerful team behind you. Target shield have failed. Again, I had a pretty good team behind me, so that helped. Okay, cool. Got me some more, some Omega Marks. I needed those anyway. So as you can see, I can do a lot of damage, but uh, you definitely see, definitely saw previously how I can also not take damage so well. Well, I think I've done about enough with this ship, honestly. I've You've seen it in the last many, many, many videos. Again, watch my previous videos on this series, uh, 54, 53, uh, previous, when I, whenever I got this ship, and you will see that I've been flying it for quite a while. So I am ready for a new ship. I don't really think there's much more I, I need or want to do with this ship. Uh, let's go on to the Tier 6 version, because I'm in-game, I'm level 65, and I want to try the Tier 6 version of the game of the game, of the ship, which is the 1,000-day uh, veteran ship. Let's go to the uh, shipyard, and let me show you the ship I'm going to use here. Not what I want. Where is the ship selector now? They moved everything. Manage ships. Customize ship. Acquire ship. There we go. Okie dokie. So, the one I'm going to get now, let's go to uh, tier 6. The one I'm going for is a veteran ship. Not a Z store ship either. There it is. The Dynace Warbird Destroyer. Not the Dynos. I have the Dynos. This is the Dynace. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to be upgrading to. Very similar to this ship. It's got the same ability where it's a 1,000 day veteran ship. 
and it's got that ability where it can be ha have regenerative mode or the offensive mode and it's basically this ship I have now except beefed up to tier 6 levels. So let's compare the two, by the way, since that's what I'm going to be getting now. Okay, so this one has Commander Tactical. And of course, I had Commander Tactical here as well. Um, it has Lieutenant Commander Engineering or a command station. So this has uh, Lieutenant Commander Engineering but no specialized seating. It just has uh, Lieutenant Commander. So, so I'll have an option to have command abilities on this tier 6 ship I'm getting now. Then it has a Lieutenant Science Station or no actually that was Lieutenant Engineering isn't it? Yeah, that's Lieutenant Engineering. This is Lieutenant Commander Engineering. So I'm going to have an extra engineering slot or uh, command abilities. Okay. And then this is Lieutenant Science. And this also has Lieutenant Science. So that will stay the same. Then I have an Ensign Universal. I had an Ensign Universal here. And then I'm going to have a Lieutenant Commander Universal. And I had a Lieutenant Commander Universal here. So basically what I'm gaining with this new ship, I'm gaining one extra engineering slot for what for uh, something, or I can use that for command abilities. So that's what I'm gaining in terms of bridge officer stations. One engineering slot, lieutenant commander engineering slot, or command abilities on this next ship. So I'm still going to have the same engineering and science stuff, and still the same universal consoles. I'm just going to probably add another, oh, I could add a command ability or another engineer ability. Probably I'll add a command ability and I'll just keep the same, uh, I'll use the same universal for engineer. I'll have two engineer or three engineer abilities. I'll have this probably the similar engineering abilities, the same engineering abilities, but one added command ability on my next ship. That's probably what I'll do. All right, and then consoles. We've got three engineering. This also had three engineering. Two science. This also had two science. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five tactical. So it has the same console slots. Nothing different in the console slots. Now that's because I upgraded this to tier 5U. The regular version of the ship, I think it had one less somewhere. One less console slot. So because I had upgraded it to tier 5U, it has that upgraded console slot, which would have met, which matches what the tier 6 has. The base turn rate is 14 on this new ship, device slot 3. My base hull is going to be 62,000. I don't remember what it was on this ship, but it should be a lot higher now. Shield modifier 0 0.83, 3 aft and 4 4 weapons, same there. So my shield strength and hull strength will probably be higher. I need to go back and look at what the tier 5 dinos had. So the base hull on this is 62 and then it has a .83 shield modifier. I'm going to compare that here to There's so many ships to go through. I wish it was easier to um, to organize these, you know? Bear with me here as I try to find it. Mm, that's the Dynase. Where's the Dynos? Wish we could like type in a name of a ship and it would like find it. Maybe I need to go back to Sub Admiral 1. Dinos, there it is. Okay. 
Oh yeah, look at the difference. Holy moly. I've got twice the hull strength on my new ship compared to this one. So the Dinos, which I'm flying now, has a base hull of 34,500. And the base hull on the new one I'm upgrading to is 62,100. So I am almost doubling my base hull strength. So I should have a lot higher hull strength on the tier 6 version. Wow, that's going to be huge. And then the shield modifier is still the same on both. So is the turn rate, by the way. Turn rate is, is the same. So I'm going to get a big shield or base or hull uh, improvement on this sh next ship. So really, the tier 6 one is the one I've really been wanting all along. Okay, so basically I'm going to have the same ship I had before in abilities. But what I'm going to gain is like a doubling of the hull strength, which I think will fix my dying so fast problem and then I will also have a command power I can add or an extra engineering power but I'll probably add a command power bridge officer seating okay so I'm looking forward to that then that's going to be real nice a nice upgrade and that will take us through, uh, and again, I'm, I'm using this ship because I've never used it before, so I know there's other ships out there, maybe better ships, but um, I've never used it before. I'm at my current maximum number of ships. I'm going to have to put some away in storage. After this, the success of the Dino Heavy Destroyer prototype, the Rhymeland Republic shipyards have decided to make further advancements upon the experimental design of the Heavy Destroyer. The result is the Dinae's Heavy Destroyer. This starship features a Lieutenant Commander Engineering slash Command Specialist Bridge Officer seat. As a 1,000 day veteran, the Rhymeland Republic has granted you command of this unique new Tier 6 starship, the prototype Warboard Destroyer Dinae's class. The Dinae's Heavy Destroyer is similar to an escort, but has many qualities of light cruisers and science vessels. While in the innate regenerative mode, excess power is transferred to the auxiliary system and you gain a bonus to starship shield systems. It comes equipped with a prototype enhanced dynamic tactical systems console. This console allows you to transform your ship between regenerative mode and tactical mode. In regenerative mode, your tachyon inversion beam is enabled, which can siphon shields for multiple targets. Activating tactical mode transfers power to your weapon systems and increases your ship's starship target systems, granting an accuracy bonus. In tactical mode, the EDTS console enables a powerful multi-targeting Lotus, which is capable of piercing multiple targets. However, while in tactical mode, your starship shield system bonus, auxiliary power bonus, and tachyon inversion beam are disabled. This console also provides a passive bonus to critical uh, severity and whole, point, whole hit points. This unique station mod can only be equipped on heavy destroyers, but may be equipped in any of their console mod slots. Achieving level 5 in the Dinae's Heavy Destroyer Tier 6 Starship Mastery will unlock the Weapon System Synergy Starship trait. While Weapon System Synergy is slotted, your direct and energy weapons will build one stack of wep Weapon System Synergy per cycle. Each stack provides a small boost to bonus projectile damage and a small boost to projectile shield penetration. The buff stacks up to 20 times. All stacks are removed when you fire a projectile weapon. Yeah, I've never had that starship trait before, so that'll be interesting to try out. Plus 10 to weapon power, plus 5 to shield power, regenerative mode, which I'll probably leave it in most of the time. Um, advanced quantum slipstream drive, experimental weapon slot, it can load cannons, singularity warp core, Romulan battle cloak. It has precise weapon systems, enhanced singularity circuitry, enhanced weapon systems, devastating weaponry, and weapon system synergy. 40 base power for all subsystems, plasma shockwave, quantum absorption, warp shadows, singularity jump, and singularity overcharge. I can't wait. This is the ship. This is the ship that's going to make this character so much better. And then we can get into playing the Borg missions. So what I'm going to do is, off camera, I'm going to have to first go put some ships in storage because I don't have enough space to even get the ship right now. And then, after I put some in dry dock and move some things around, then I'm going to claim this ship. I'm going to upgrade to this ship, and I'm going to make a build on this ship. I guess using the current gear I have because I don't have anything else. So it'll probably be the same gear anyway. And then I'm going to come back with a video and I will show you the new ship and the changes I've made to the ship or anything else. And I will show you uh, all the stats on the ship 
maybe we'll take it into battle and see how it does. We'll play the uh, defensive Starbase 1 again. And uh, then we'll get into playing the, uh, the Borg missions, starting with the, the, uh, the first Borg mission under the Borg Advance. But I'm looking forward to upgrading to this new ship because I'm just tired of this old one, this Dinos one. I'm looking forward to having a uh, Tier 6 ship again and um, making this character continuing to get better and working on the reputation and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, eventually I want to get away from the Aegis set. Um, obviously, I want to go with a Riemann set, probably. But uh, right now, I don't think I have the resources to upgrade to that. But I'm going to look at that situation because, yeah, the goal will be to change out of the Aegis set and put on a different set here. Just don't know when that's going to be. Again, always a work in progress, right? Always a work in progress. So that's what you can expect for the next video is I'll come back with my new Dynase Destroyer and show you what it's all about show you some battle and we'll play the first Borg mission. I don't know if we'll play it in that video or the next one after that but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do all the upgrading on my ship here off camera and then I'll come back and show you what I've changed. So there you go everybody I just wanted to give you this update on this video this series is continuing I'm going to continue to make videos on this every day now especially now that I'm upgrading to a new ship it's gonna be very exciting and uh, we can play mission by mission by mission and keep keep uh, keep doing this. I want to, like I said, record every mission on this playthrough, which I started last year, 2018, and now it's 2019, but that's okay. I'm still going to continue this series and play it all the way through. Every day, uh, you'll have, well, Monday through Friday, you'll have a new video of this series. So thank you for watching, and I hope you continue to watch and stay tuned for the next one.